Greetings. Last time we fixed the keyboard on this compact portable and uh, the screen's good, the hard drive is working, but uh, today we're going to have a look inside this machine and see what kind of uh, expansion cards it has. But before that, uh, I neglected to test the floppy drive. So I dug out this disk and we're going to see if the machine will boot off of this come on so uh, while it's going through its lengthy boot up procedure uh, the machine I ran uh, we can do this again, but I ran check disk while it still had booted off the hard drive, and the machine does have 640K. Does report this drive as a uh, 10 meg drive, and everything seems to be hunky dory here. But uh, let's wait to see if it actually boots the floppy, and if it does, then uh, this thing seems to be fully functional, especially now that the keyboard is working and it is reading the floppy it's also a lengthy boot process but there you go is it going to boot? yep boot it so one of the first things we're gonna run is check disk and that's going to tell us the uh, what this disk drive is all about and at the end it tells us that 653 312 total bytes of memory so it is maxed out and just for grins let's do a check disk on the hard drive and it's calculating but yeah it is in fact a 10 meg disk and it didn't complain about anything well the only thing it's complaining about is telling me to use scan disk but I, uh, that's not I don't think that's on the uh, floppy disk and it isn't but it does have the basics it has a format and F disk on it which you can use to either reformat this drive or if you have another F MFM drive format that and partition it from the ground up but okay everything seems to be working here let's crack open the case and look at the expansion cards I'm not going to take you long on the journey of uh, opening up this case. I think there's a whole bunch of other videos available to show you that. And I don't want to be embarrassed when I start when I start breaking tabs. So, we'll be back when the case is open. Okay, that wasn't great fun. But I didn't break any additional tabs. Note I said additional because Two of the tabs were already broken. But anyway, here's a glimpse into the card cage. What you can see, we have one, two, three, four, five slots, of which the first one, two, three are full length, and the other two, these two are short. So let's take all of these cards out and see what they are well with all the cards gone we can see like three-fifths of the motherboard in order to see the whole motherboard I would have to remove the monitor and uh, the uh, hard drive and the floppy drive which I'm not gonna do because uh, the, the, there really isn't anything under there out of the ordinary 
I mean, when we look in the corner, we can see the uh, processor is down here, shoved in the back. It's an 8088. There's no math coprocessor in here. The only real interesting part is that we have four rows of RAM. These are 64 by 1 DRAMs. And looking at it from here, each row has eight chips in it. But uh, if you get deeper down into it, there is actually, for every row, an additional RAM chip here, 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 and here, basically giving this machine 64 by 4, 256K by 9. And that's the way the original PCs were because they used the extra bit for parity checking. And that's about all that's going on inside here. The construction is good. It, it, it is using less strong materials than IBM originally did for weight savings and everything else, even though this thing still weighs a ton. But let's have a look uh, at what the cards were that we pulled. The board closest to the handle, the handle being here, was this uh, AST 6-pack plus and it has lots of things on it and I'm not exactly sure what they all are well the WD8250 that's a serial it's an RS-232 controller we have a clock chip with a backup battery over here more header connectors that aren't marked but most important of all we have memory here and again we got one two three four five six rows or columns whichever way you want to look at it of 64k by 1 DRAMs you can hear you can see clearly that there are also nine uh, each row is 9 bits wide because of the parity and if you add it all up that gives us our 640k that the machine reports. Next in line we have the uh, hard disk controller, the MFM controller and before I forget you are going to need a uh, T10 Tool. All the screws inside here use a T10s, including the screws that hold all the boards down. But here we can see this is the common connector here, that will daisy chain, and it supports two drives. And other than that, lots of TTL and uh, some dedicated chip for hard disk control. It is labeled IBM 1501492 so this is actually an IBM card and uh, I think uh, when the machine was upgraded with a hard drive because I think this this machine originally had two floppies in it when it was upgraded I guess they bought IBM uh, accessories including the controller and the drive itself. Here we have the display card. It's marked VDU controller oh. <clears throat> VDU controller LP3 and uh, this is an EGA card but it's running in uh, Obviously, since there's only a monochrome monitor in here, you can see everything in black and green in 16 different shades on it. 
It does have a CGA, CGA EGA connector on the end over here. So uh, I guess this would plug into an external EGA monitor and it has a video output composite video output here which I haven't tried but we can try that out and everything specific here is marked as compact parts so this is probably a compact product actually and yeah that's and it's using a 6505, what, a 6505 on here? Let me get my magnifying glasses here. Yes, it's using a 6505 processor to manage memory. Or that that's the interface to the bus that transfers the data to the frame buffer over here but that is your display card the last card is the uh, floppy printer board and it also has a compact sticker on here so this is also probably an in-house design it has a DB25 for the printer output over here and this of course is a 34 pin uh, floppy connector and I would assume that it supports at a minimum two floppies and that sums up what's inside this machine now uh, let me see if I can put the pu puzzle back together Cards usually just slot in, it's not a big deal, but there are a bunch of ribbon cables snaking through. I mean, I have to take a picture of it to see how to route all of the wires to the connectors because they're kind of going underneath cards and it, uh, yeah, it looked like it would be fun to put it back together, but I do have pictures of it. So hopefully I can use those pictures to get all the cards back in and still have the machine functional. It's a good thing that I documented how the cables run uh, from the drive, especially the one from the hard drive to the controller card over here. And the cables had to be run a certain way underneath these two and then come out of here and go to the drives. If I hadn't documented this well, then uh, it would have taken a long time. You can't just stick the cards in and then hook up the cables. But uh, you have to hook up the hard drive cables first, and they're not long enough for you to keep the card outside, but you plug them in, you set the card way back, because the cables were out underneath these two boards. I know it seems like a minor thing, but if you take all of this out and you haven't fully documented how the wires are dressed, you're going to have a somewhat difficult time getting everything to fit in here again. And this problem is there, of course, because there's limited space inside here. It's portable, it's smaller, and an original IBM PC would have been very easy because there was lots of room to move around, but here things are very tight. So, uh, yes, if you work on one of these, document every step. And even though I have film of it, the film doesn't really show how things were routed originally. So you may need additional documentation along with your footage to be able to reassemble something like this. Well, I was going to do a quick goodbye, but the uh, computer did not cooperate with me. So what happened was I put everything back together again. It's booted up and it couldn't see, it couldn't read from drive C from the hard disk anymore. When I ran check disk and stuff, it kept
kept telling me that the file allocation table is bad. So uh, after a lot of back and forth, I decided, hey, I wanted to uh, reformat this drive. So I reformatted it. I did a low-level reformat. I did an F this to create a partition. The C partition spans the entire drive. And of course, this machine got updated to DOS 6.22. It was basically running DOS 3.1. And as you can see, it is booting just fine off of the drive now. So I installed my legal original copy of the Norton Utilities version 6.01. And you may see that it announced itself on the boot screen already. The downside is it used up more than 20% uh, of the 10 meg space on the drive, but hey, it is what it is. And uh, how can we how can we leave this? before at least running a game real quick and uh, what should we run? Space Wars or Space War written in 95, showing up the uh, huge graphics capabilities. Exit, play, a robot, robot, planet, gravity, and pause. So let's play. I haven't quite figured out how to play this, but I can rotate my ship. I can shoot. What is that? I can disappear. And I can teleport. So, I want to shoot this guy. Boom! I got him. But excellent uh, sound quality. All right, I didn't get this. I guess it's game over already, but the game now works great. Well, the computer works great. May the farce be with you. And, uh, of course, I have Norton installed on this now. So nothing can go wrong. Well, everything can go wrong, but Norton will fix it. That's interesting. Oh, there you go. You couldn't read the title screen at all on the video, but it gives you all this good stuff you can do. So, uh, there you have it. Compact's fully functional. The biggest job necessary was, of course, the keyboard, but uh, the uh, hard drive decided to get ill just in time, just in the middle of this video actually, as you, as you saw. But So I spent a couple hours figuring out how to format this, because uh, you have to basically go to debug and jump, write a short piece of code and then jump to a fixed location where the ROM for the hard drive is located and that fixed location will let you, will go and format the disk. Then, of course, you F this kit to make it a valid C drive. And then you go and use the DOS format utility to make it readable. But it works great now. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and hit the bell and all the other good stuff. And we'll see you next time.